Hello and welcome to the Green Style Power Bra Sew Along. I'm Sarah and I work with Green Style Creations and I blog at sewingwithsarah.com and I am really excited to share the Power Bra with you today. Um, when I tested this bra late last year, it was really the first bra that I had ever sewn and I was a little intimidated um, about the construction, about fitting, and when I saw how smoothly that all came together, I really wanted to start planning a sew along so that I could share the pattern with all of you. So if you're a new bra seamstress, welcome. I'm gonna be going over the pattern and making it really accessible for you. If you're a more experienced seamstress, feel free to share some of your wisdom and I hope that you also enjoy the construction of the power bra this week. If you're new to sew alongs with me, every day um, this week I will be posting a new video with a different step um, for constructing the power bra. So at the end of the week, hopefully we'll all have a finished power bra to show for our work today. Um, I highly encourage you to be interactive throughout the process, comment on the post, show your progress, ask any questions, post fit pictures. Um, I'm really here to help you this week. If you're watching this video later on, um, still feel free, to, feel free to drop me a comment on a blog post or send me a message or tag me on Facebook um, and I'm happy to help you then as well. So before we get started with um, our day one task, which is really going to be to measure ourselves and cut out our fabric, let's talk a little bit about the features of the Power Bra. The Power Bra is a princess seamed sports bra, um, and it has several different options that you'll wanna consider um, when you're going to cut out your fabric. So before you cut out, you wanna make sure that you know which option you wanna use. It has an option for a high neck or a lower neck. The lower neck bra hits me right about where this shirt hits me. So the higher neck is going to be a couple uh, inches below, above that. So that's open to everyone. It has um, options for a strappy cross back, and I'll show you on my dress form. This is the strappy cross back, okay? Um, a strappy U back where it's kind of scooped, or a racer back with or without a pocket with or without a bottom keyhole in the band, okay? It also has built-in options for an adjustable strap or a nursing version. So this is really a bra where I feel like there's an option to fit everyone. So, and I'm, that's why I'm so excited to share it with you. So now that we've talked about the features of the power bra, let's talk a little bit about your supplies. For your main outer fabric and your lining, you're going to need one half to three quarters of yard of fabric that has 75% four-way stretch. That means that four inches of fabric is going to stretch all the way to seven inches, both horizontally and vertically, okay? And you can measure your fabric at home or if you're planning on ordering fabric, this should be listed um, on the retailer's website how much uh, stretch the fabric has. Okay, so things like Suplex, which is a brand name athletic fabric, or um, many other kind of wick away fabrics also have this type of stretch. Circular knit, um, you know, there's all sorts of, of kind of fabric options that would be appropriate for this bra. Okay, um, so you're gonna wanna have one half to three quarters of an in, or three quarters of a yard of main and lining fabric. Um, now you may also want for extra support to include power net or power mesh. Um, power met, net is different than power mesh in that it is designed to provide support in your bra. Okay, so Green Style has a whole great blog post on this, so I'll link that um, in my blog post comments so that you can um, check out the differences and make sure that you have power net. Um, that's just going to increase the support in the bra, make it more of a high impact type of bra. So you want to make sure that you have that on hand as well. You can either use it as a lining or sandwich it in between the main and the lining layers. Okay, something else you're gonna to wanna to make sure to have on hand is a few yards, two to four yards of clear flat elastic. Okay, um, one quarter to th um, three eighths of an inch wide. This is going to be going inside your seams and also inside your straps if you're doing the strappy back options. Okay, and making your own straps. Another option, an alternative to making your own straps is to use bra strapping. Um, the Fabric Fairy carries this. This is 3 8 inch wide bra strapping with a silicone back. That really helps the bra stay anchored on your body. And I really enjoy using it. I went snowboarding in my bra the other day. I had that silicone backed elastic and it didn't move an inch. So that's an alternative to making your own straps. It's kind of a nice, quick and easy um, step. It kind of saves you some time. So that's an option as well. Or you could use regular bra strapping as long as it's supportive enough, okay? So that's something you might want to consider um, as well. Now everyone is also going to need some under bust elastic, 
Okay, so this is going to go in here. It's going to be one and a half to two inches wide and really just enough to go around your rib cage minus a little bit. Okay, so we'll be talking about how to select your size, but you're going to want to have that on hand as well. If you are doing the nursing options, you're going to want to have a set of three quarter inch nursing clips. And if you're doing the adjustable front option, you're going to want to have a, um, about 10 inches of three quarter inch twill tape, which does not stretch. Um, you could also substitute fold over elastic for that. And you're going to need one set of three quarter inch swim or bra hooks for that adjustable front option. And um, one set of three quarter inch wide um, bra sliders, the rectangular ones for that adjustable strap option. Okay, the other thing is, is if you're doing the nursing option, you're gonna have a little tiny bit of elastic that's gonna get anchored along the side to keep that clip from flying away. Um, and you could use a decorative lingerie elastic or just some fold over elastic for that. If you are including the racer back pocket, which is not this version, but the racer back um, pocket at the top, you're gonna want something to use for that pocket and maybe some fold over elastic for finishing it. And the same thing for that keyhole either some fabric to finish that keyhole as a binding or some fold over elastic, which works as a quick and easy way to finish the keyhole. If you want to include cups on your bra, I'll be telling you how and when to do that. So you would want to order those separately. And the keyhole option also has the ability to have an adjustable back closure. So you could order those, they sell them, those kind of three loop hook things um, that they have on bras. They sell those online or you can maybe pick one up in Joann's and that's another option that you could consider. Okay, so lots of options to think about in this bra. Um, you can construct, construct this entire thing with your sewing machine. I'll be talking about the different stitches to use. If you have a serger, you can certainly use that or a cover stitch machine. There'll be an opportunity to use that as well, but it's not required. If all you have is a sewing machine, just make sure you have some matching thread. Make sure you have a stretch needle. Um, something like a 7511, um, 8012 size, and you'll be good to go there. Okay, so those are all of the supplies that you need for um, the bra pattern. Let's talk a little bit about sizing. Um, so you're going to want to measure yourself in two places um, to size this bra. And this may be different, is likely different from your ready to wear bra size. So don't get caught up into what you measure in ready to wear. Um, really take a minute to measure yourself for this bra so that you can get a good fit. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do to measure is to put on a well-fitting sports bra, okay? So you don't wanna measure in a regular bra, put on a well-fitting sports bra, and you're going to measure yourself across the full bust. Make sure when you do it that your measuring tape is not drooping down, okay? So you don't want your measuring tape to droop down. You want it to go all the way around your bust. And you're gonna take that, that's your full bust measurement at the apex of your breasts. And then you're also gonna wanna do an under bust measurement, okay? Your rib cage right under your bust. And you're going to take those two measurements and you're going to find the difference between them. So if you're over bust measurement was 34 inches and your under bust measurement was 30 inches, your band size would be 30 inches and your cup size would be a D because every inch is a letter. So A, B, C, D, okay? In terms of that, um, that bra size. So you would wanna select in the pattern, the pattern has a guide for printing based on your cup and your band measurements and then your, um, your, your given option that you're choosing. So make sure that you do your measuring, make sure that that measuring tape isn't kind of going down and drooping down and distorting that measurement. And then if you have questions, definitely feel free to come and ask. Um, that's what we're here for this week. So make sure that you've got your sizing down. Take a little drink of water here. And once you've got your sizing down, now, some, a couple other kind of notes about sizing. If you are on the larger band and cup sizes, there is an option in the pattern, you can see it in Adobe layers, for adding a little bit of extra coverage. And we found in testing that this was important, especially for those larger cup and band sizes, to prevent any kind of side boob, offered a little bit more support. So if you fit into that, you could add a little bit of, you know, use that higher coverage cut line um, if you wanted to. So that's something else to consider in terms of sizing. It's definitely not required. I actually really like, for me, um, 
and I, I'm a smaller band in cup sides, but I really like how it scoops lower. It never kind of chafes on my underarms because it has that nice scoop. So it may or may not be something that you want to do. Again, I just really recommend making a muslin and kind of testing out your fit in advance, okay? Um, but those are those are some kind of tips about sizing. If you are between sizes, we recommend sizing down, okay? Um, because it is a sports bra and it's supposed to have a certain you know type of compression. It's supposed to be a little bit compressive for you, okay? Um, something else to consider in bras is that bras have something called sister sizing. So this means that if you measure, let's say, a 30D, a 32C is going to be kind of a sister size. It's going to be a similar size. Um, and you might try one or the other. If you make a muslin, one's not quite right. You might try your sister size and see how that fits. Okay? So I think that I've covered all of the options, the supplies that you need, the sizing, the different options that are offered in the bra. And what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna take you down to my cutting table and I'm actually gonna show you the different pieces that I have cut out for the bra. Okay, so um, after you've watched that part of the video, please go back and comment, show us the fabric that you're using, ask any questions that you have about sizing, and let's get this party started. Okay, now that we've talked about supplies and fit, let's talk a little bit about um, cutting out our pattern pieces and what we need. I've gone ahead and done this ahead of time because I didn't want to spend too much time having you watch me cut things out. Um, but just really quickly, I like to use a rotary cutter. Um, I use clips, I'll use um, washers for pattern weights when I cut. So those are the kind of things you wanna have on hand when you're cutting. You're going to want to, if you're making the racer back version, you're gonna to wanna to have the following pieces. You're gonna to wanna to have the front center. You're gonna cut one from the main fabric, one from the lining. And then on this one, I'm also adding power mesh. So I also cut a layer of power mesh as well. So I have basically three um, main fronts, main, lining, and power mesh, okay? Now, you're also going to want to cut the side front. You're gonna to wanna to cut that out of your main fabric two mirrored images. You're gonna to wanna to cut that out of your lining, two mirror images, and you're gonna to wanna to cut that out of your power mesh if you're using it, two mirror images. So I'm just using clips here so I can keep everything organized and together. Now your band, this is going to be cut according to your band size, and you just need one on the fold. You're not going to be lining this, um, and you're not gonna be adding power mesh to it either if you're using that option. So that's just the band. Um, now, if you are adding the keyhole, there's a part on the pattern for the keyhole marks, and on this one, you're cutting it based on you know one and a half inch or two inch elastic. So if you're using two inch elastic, you're gonna be cutting a slightly taller band. But you're gonna to wanna to make sure if you're adding the keyhole to clip that little keyhole mark, okay? Then you're also going to need the racer back piece. And in my case, I am doing the keyhole option here on the racer back, so I cut that out. You have the option of making the racer back be a full solid back or with the keyhole, okay? And this is where you're going to want to have your fold over elastic. Um, and this is the, there's a keyhole binding piece and that's what I cut out of fold over elastic. You could also use main fabric or a contrast fabric as long as it has enough stretch to bind the keyhole, that's fine as well. So you have that piece and then you have your racer back piece. Now there's a part at the top of the racer back says cut here for adjustable. So if you're making the adjustable straps, you're gonna cut there. If you're not making the adjustable straps, you're gonna cut lower. Okay, which is what I did, but I'm still going to show you later on how to do the adjustable. There's also a marking here for adding, um, if you're doing the adjustable version, for where to put your twill tape. Okay, and what I like to do is I like to actually cut this out and then go with over with like a chalk marker or a friction pin and mark inside at least the top and the bottom of where my... Um, tool tape is going to go. There's also a length and shorten line on this piece and this is going to come into play if you feel like, you know, you might need to do a muslin first, but if you feel like it's just too long in the back and it's not staying flat on your back, you may need to shorten this piece a little bit. Okay, so that's a possibility. Again, that really depends on your unique shape. 
So everybody's gonna do, to be different. You're gonna cut this piece out of your main fabric and your lining fabric. Now I don't put power mesh in the back of my bras, but some people do. Some people like it all over for the maximum support. And if that's you, then you're gonna wanna cut that out. And then finally, if you're doing the racer back option and you're adding that pocket, there's an optional pocket piece. You're gonna cut one out on the fold. I cut mine out of a, a fun athletic mesh. This is not the power mesh or power net. This is just a fun athletic mesh. And then I have a little piece of fold over elastic for binding the top. You don't have to bind the top with fold over elastic. You could just hem it, um, but the elastic does give it a little bit of extra staying power in terms of keeping a phone or something in there. Okay, so those are the pieces for the racer back version. Of course, you're gonna also want to have your clear elastic on hand for reinforcing those seams and your under bust elastic, whether you're doing one and a half or two inch. And you can pre-cut that or you can wait to the end, which is typically what I do. So there's the racer back version. Let's talk for a minute about the U back version, okay? So if you're cutting the version that has straps that cross but has a U back, you're gonna still cut that same front center piece from main and lining fabric. And in this case, my lining fabric is gonna be my power mesh. And this is according to your cup size. You can cut the low neck or the mid neck on any of these front pieces. Make sure you're also clipping or marking those notches somehow. So you've got that. Then you're also going to want that front side, again, out of main and lining and clipping your notches. It does have a note here and I didn't mention this on the other one, but make sure to cut a quarter inch off the bottom of your lining. So not of the main fabric, but just of the lining. And this is gonna help the seam when you're done with your power bra to roll toward the inside so that you're not seeing the seam along the top. It's gonna roll toward the inside and not be visible. So make sure you do that. Um, you're gonna cut your straps. Now in this case, I'm using the, um, the silicone back strapping. If you're not, you're going to use the strappy U back piece to cut this out of your fabric, but I'm using a, the strap. So I just have those pre-ready made right here. So you're going to need four of those for the U strappy U back option. Going to need your under bust elastic. And in this case, I'm doing using this fun decorative elastic. This is an option. If you don't want to cover your elastic in fabric and you have some decorative elastic, you can do that. And then you're going to need the back piece of the strappy U back, which kind of has the swoop. Um, you're gonna cut this on the fold out of your main and your lining fabric. And if you're sandwiching power mesh in there, you're gonna do that as well. And you're gonna also wanna cut a quarter inch off the bottom of that piece. So when you're cutting that piece off, that bit off your lining, you're gonna cut it off of the back piece on the lining, the front side on the lining, and the main fabric on the lining. Okay, all three of them. So that's it for the strappy U back. And then we reach for the strappy back version here. We have our band piece. This is the strappy cross back that I showed you on my dress form. This is the cross back back piece and it has these marks here, which could be a little confusing. So I'm just gonna take a second to explain those. Um, based on your band size, you're gonna cut the marks along your stra uh, strappy cross back piece. And this is gonna be, tell you where to insert the straps, um, two of the straps, and it's also gonna tell you, you know, what to leave open so you can insert them. So you're gonna wanna do that, and then along the bottom, there's a notch to mark as well. Um, again, based on your band size, and you're gonna want to mark that. This is where that other strap is going to go. So the, the on the strappy back, there's a strap that goes kind of inside at the top and there's a strap that comes and crosses and gets anchored down right above the band and that's what you're marking that for, okay? So you're gonna cut that back piece out of main and lining and power mesh if you want to. And then again, you have your front side pieces out of main, lining, and power mesh which is optional, and, or I'm sorry, your front center and your front side, main, lining, and power mesh optionally. And then this version has two different types of strap pieces. So they're numbered, there's straps one and four, which are, sorry, one and four, which are the longest straps. 
So you're going to want to cut two of those, either from your fabric or your bra strapping, and two and three, which are the shorter straps. The longer straps are the ones that are gonna get anchored right above the band, and the shorter straps are gonna be caught in the top um, of the back of the bra. Okay, so those are all the pieces that you need for the strappy back. Um, now, if you are doing one of the adjustable options, you're gonna want to make sure to cut this optional adjustable front strap cut four. So make sure this is just like this tiny, teeny, tiny little piece. Make sure it doesn't get lost. If you're doing the adjustable front strap option, you're gonna wanna make sure that you cut four of those, okay? And the seam allowances throughout the pattern are three, quarter, are three eighths of an inch. So, um, you know, once you've got your pieces cut, trim your lining and keep that seam allowance in mind and just get everything ready to go. I just like to keep all of my pieces together in bundles so that I don't lose them. You can keep track of them um, and then you'll be ready to go for um, tomorrow's post. So please comment. Um, let me know how it's going. Let me know what fabric you've chosen, what options you've chosen, and I'll see you back here tomorrow.